Hey, everybody. Hello. Hello. And welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Holy cow, we have got the clan for you, the party today. We are getting things started. Holy goodness. I'm Susan Chatzer, and to my right is Susan Hayes. Susan is popping in from <laughs> Miami, Florida. Susan is the spark activator. Holy cow, she's an inspirational speaker. Her life is so bright, I'm gonna need a pair of shades. <laughs> <laughs> to read all about Susan, uh, she's an inspirational speaker, author, energy healer, and life coach for all ages. Her primary mission is to inspire and empower others to activate the spark that's within. Susan is a number one international best-selling author. Her published works include Widow Wisdom and Ollie the Oddball. Susan is certified yep, in multiple wisdom modalities, energy healing modalities. And if you use the infinite wisdom into her work, Susan has created an online course called Abundance Academy, how to activate your brain, your body, <laughs> your business for your success. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. You are so welcome. Holy cow, so what's the weather like in Miami? Let me see. Uh, it Hot and humid? <laughs> <laughs> Last time you checked, everyone was in a bikini. <laughs> Actually, except for me, I'm working on that. I'll probably, by the time I'm 60, I'll probably start wearing it. <laughs> I'll be on the beach in a one piece. <laughs> 60 is a good age. So I think right? myself just a few years to work on it, but everyone, no matter what age they are, has like a two piece. Has a two piece or huh? Well, there's like a two piece you know, for like different times in our life. There's like the two piece we had when we were teenagers, then there's the two piece we had before children. <laughs> and then the, the mom's two piece. <laughs> and well, then as we go down. I'm not the only one with a one piece bathing suit. If you count the topless woman yesterday, she only had one piece on. <laughs> I was like, oh, I fit in, I think. Uh, that's right. So maybe you could just like lower yours too right? and create. Great. Something else. You already got a thumbs up from someone. <laughs> that is so cool. So cool. So cool. Oh my goodness. This is so much fun. So let me pop this up here. So, um, Please, 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 um, in the description on StreamYard, give permission to um, StreamYard to allow you to have your picture and your name show up in the comments, uh, because that way we'll be able to share your information and have a direct connect with you to our audience and our special guests and back to you guys. So definitely use that description um, that you see up in StreamYard to activate your personal, private, and now, completely public information. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't want to just keep seeing your Facebook user. I mean, it's nice, but it gets boring after a while. We want to see your name. We want to see the lights. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you're on Facebook to be public anyways. Yeah, right? I can go look right now if I wanted to. <laughs> it's a media platform. <laughs> I actually want to share, so ooh, let, me, let me do that. Okay. Social. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely um, give give them um, permission uh, to, to do that. And in the comments, let us know like who you are, where you're calling in from, or watching or viewing. Um, and take a minute, would you please um, do the share button, share this live stream to your group or your Facebook page. Um, because the more of us that co-create together, the greater of an impact we can have all around the world. Um, so Susan, thank you so much for that. I know this is I'm trying to share it. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! And um, we have a very special guest host with us today. And hello everyone, we heard you. <laughs> we heard hello. you. Derek is with us as a special guest host today. Hello, Derek. Derek was our guest speaker last week. Yes. <laughs> so, boy, I am. 
<laughs> yeah, it's backwards for us. So we forgot to have backwards. a practice. <laughs> thing. So I could just like look. Like the Brady button. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so cool. So Derek is back with us as guest hosting today. We are so excited. Derek had such a huge um response from everyone and they really, really wanted to see more. Derek, we ran two hours last week, like a whole hour, Derek, beyond. <laughs> that seemed like 10 minutes. That was great. We collapsed time and space. We did. We were in the ever-present now, and it was eternal. <laughs> two hours worth of eternity. <laughs> so we extended the um, infinite possibility uh, to bring you back today, and we're so glad that you um, accepted the invitation to come co-host with us. So if you didn't get to see him last week, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about Derek and his life is so bright. I'm going to need some shades to read his as well. So Derek is a former metaphysic and egoistic, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> an egoic military officer and government employee. He became a Reiki master. He's a Monet. Now, let me Make sure I'm saying this right. Omane. Munai Ki. Munai Ki Shaman. Not Mune. Munai. <laughs> Munai. Munai Ki Shaman. Uh, Institute for Spiritual Awakening. Human initiated contact experiencer and dedicated meditator. Among other things, we put him on the path to the gift of plant medicine, like ayahuasca as well. I don't prefer to label myself with these <laughs> aforementioned titles, but rather prefer to act in the capacity of a healer using these principles, everything like re remote viewing, contact channeling, and there's probably more to it that didn't fit in the little shoe. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't fit in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. But, you know, basically, Derek, you know, what you're saying is, you know, that is all like the training that kind of led up to who you are and what you do now. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. It's been a journey of of healing and growth, but ultimately all of these things lead us to developing our own consciousness. And consciousness just is the, the big undercurrent of our spiritual journey. And it does open up windows to other dimension, to our greater selves, to senses of peace and serenity and really the, the basis of everything. So I, I see my life as a giant exploration in the realm of consciousness with everybody. Yeah, that is huge. That's not something kind of little, Derek. Like, you know, we just say it like it just rolls right off of you. And it's sort of like, yeah, like it just like rolls off and then it like blows up and expands. It's just like huge contribution, like beyond, beyond, beyond. So yeah, so thank you for being here. Thank you for, you know, stepping up and acknowledging and Tammy is waving at you. <laughs> Honored, thank you. Hey, Tammy. <laughs> um, yeah, and Derek, you know, after you were on here last Friday, like things sort of shifted for you and you wrote, you know, a huge post, um, you know, that I asked if you would share in the group, like what transformed for you since you were on live with us? Well, you know, what? All of these things, I, I do enjoy meditation a lot. And sometimes you just ca get caught in your stream of thoughts and you can recognize that they're just thoughts and, and mere things. But other times you start tapping into true knowledge and your own personal truths. So perhaps just being in that environment, and it was certainly very high vibe for a couple hours, really opened, opened my heart to sharing a little bit more. And when we get into topics like the ones we discuss here, we touch on some things that aren't necessarily a part of doctrine or established beliefs or religion, whatever you want to call it. We start touching into things that are a little bit deeper, uh, a little bit more meaningful, and also a little bit more true. And the only way that the word gets out is by by sharing these things. And so I had this wonderful sharing experience with all of you on Friday, and it just kind of swung the door open to remind myself to be authentic. And we're not going to move forward as a civilization of humans unless we're all teaching and learning and growing from each other. So it kind of 
kind of set my spark. That was great. Yeah. Thank for you. you so much. Thank you. Activation. Yes. A spark. A spark activation. It activated my spark. Yeah. And it, <laughs> go ahead, Susan. What were you going to say? Well, it's funny because I was just recording that particular activation today, like a formal activation. Synchronicity. Right. And we all have so much of that wonderful potential within us. It's it's never not there. And the only person that clouds it and distorts it is ourselves. So when we finally clear that away and open our hearts, just amazing things happen. And I had a wonderful response from that post. And the people that resonate with it will resonate with it. The people that aren't quite ready yet, maybe not, or maybe another time, but it's important to be there for our evolving tribe. So it was a great motivator. It was just so wonderful last week and it left me feeling so refreshed and renewed. We were hitting on some deeper and even darker topics, but it's energizing. We come out of it, you know, even better and more healed. That was just an amazing feeling. I'm feeling it right now. I'll come out of this being all jazzed again and, and, and hyper. That was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for honoring that. Like a lot of people would go, that's a little bit too much of me. <laughs> You're like, do you ever feel that way? It's kind of like, oh, wait, what if someone sees me? Yeah, that, that post kind of blew that out of the <laughs> out of the water. I can't go back now. <laughs> yeah, so it's sort of like when you become aware, right? You almost like would have to start choosing against yourself, you know, to actually stay the person you were then to who you are now. Um, and that in and of itself takes a lot of energy to hold that in place, that not you Because <laughs> the new you is so expansive. And yeah. right. So, yeah. yeah, you'd be just trying to put the brakes on a, on a runaway Sometimes train. Sometimes you just have to step out of yourself. Yes, we need to get out of our own way. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Thank you, Priscilla. You have to get out of your own way completely. <laughs> yes, and you know a lot about that. <laughs> Not only in a personal sense, but with all the people that you are in contact with and work with. Um, so thank you, Priscilla. So Susan and I um, and a couple of the other high, high Vibe Tribe members, you know, we have just really tried our best to honor the new members. <laughs> we really have. We really, really have. And we've done all kinds of of things in trying to create a different possibility and make it fun. And we just didn't feel like we were doing justice. Um, so interestingly enough, I was on the phone this weekend with Priscilla and I want to tell you a little bit about <laughs> infinite possibilities. <laughs> The bubble maker, the bubble maker <laughs> in the house. Oh, look at, look at Priscilla's card. Oh, That's I love beautiful. it. That's beautiful. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. we were pretty out beautiful. there. Look. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's cool. Gorgeous. That's where we are. So everybody get your tickets. Get your tickets out. <laughs> it's the, the solar train. <laughs> solar system. Solar train train <laughs> You're on, you're on a ride. You're on a ride. For us. If you're just getting here, pop in to the chat um, in the comments. You know where you're where you're hailing from. Where are you? So I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit about Priscilla. Um, if you didn't get a chance to meet her um, when she was on with us live or take part in the near death experience, right? The truth about dying. That I'm going to tell you a little bit about her now. So Priscilla is not only a psychic medium. Uh, she lives in South Africa. So if she does um sort of fade in and out we'll just blame it on her country it's south africa's fault <laughs> so priscilla is a psychic medium and a healer and she's been working and teaching in this field for over 25 years she's coming up on her third decade she has lived and traveled overseas and gained knowledge and experience from that journey she prides herself on having a very gentle approach to healing and can help with loss and grief and old stuck issues. So true, Priscilla, so true. Some of her services include the cleansing and clearing of spaces in people's homes, 
Priscilla also teaches various courses ranging from healing to psychic development and angel healing. Having communicated with spirit for most um, of her life, she has a unique insight into life after death. Allowing her to communicate with spirit has helped her to help other people find peace of mind and allow them to let go of their departed loved ones. So yay! Shout out, welcome to Priscilla. Yay. <laughs> Yay, Priscilla. So I'm how does an email the angel husband and I talk to dead people. <laughs> yes, you talk to dead people. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. and, and speak with spirit. That is so true. So we are so blessed to have you. Definitely. Uh, yeah. And well, thank you. you know, thank you for including me in your tribe. You know, I come with the, the from the African tribe. So I bring a bit of Africa to your tribe. Absolutely. Africa, South, North, East, and West. All four kinds of Africans. <laughs> so it's, can you it's hear been me amazing now? to, you know, I, I keep jumping in and out. So my internet is very bad tonight. Um, so That's okay. You are six <laughs> hours. I do keep you coming in and out because of my internet. It's because of your internet having a problem. Michael is sending you love. Yes. Oh. Thank you, Michael. Big shout out to you, honey. So glad you're here. Yeah. So we have um, our brand new members. And Priscilla, we've created a position. <laughs> so Priscilla Jenkins pr pronunciation party. <laughs> Yay. So she, I know, right? So she's gonna uh, give us a pronunciation lesson uh, because we've butchered most of your names, um, even though we have tried our very best not to. <laughs> so Priscilla, and Priscilla, if you're not clear, Derek has volunteered. Like he's mm. on, he's on the, uh, I'm not he's running away now. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, like too late. Something's happening with my camera, everybody. <laughs> it's an earthquake. <laughs> an earthquake. Right? Um, so Priscilla, can you see the new names that are in the chat? <gasps> no, she can't. She dropped. <laughs> oh, she's gone. Oh, my goodness. Derek. Derek. All right. I can't see the new names. Oh, wait. She could be back. Oh. Yay. Hi. Hi sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It's like on again, off again. She's playing with me. She's That's playing it. With me. <laughs> I'm Susan, saying hot and cold tonight, girls. <laughs> we got to add another P to that pronunciation party for Stella. You're playing with me. <laughs> so Susan feels very relaxed when she sees you, and then she gets very anxious when you disappear. And then, <laughs> where'd she go? <laughs> <laughs> and Derek, you're like, I'm, I'm keeping you on the toes. <laughs> Cool. Can you, can you see their names in our chat, Priscilla? Can you put it on again? Because I've come in again and I've lost the chat. Sure. If you wouldn't I mind. Would be happy to. Thank you. So we've, just to like okay. share with everybody, we have like record breaking weeks um, of people who have uh, jumped on um, yes. the bandwagon. And we thank all of you because, you know, it's you who are sharing this possibility with more and more people. And, you know, what is truly, um, you know, expanding is, you know, every day we wake up and there's more and more people that are um, looking to be approved as members um, in our group. Yes. And, you know, and one of the four corners of the world as well, which is amazing because it's not just from the US, but it's South Africa, it's Australia, it's the UK. So yes. it's everywhere. Which yes, is and New Zealand. Lovely. It's about spreading the word as yeah. far as we can. And New Zealand. Yes. Yeah. We're going to keep this party going. Okay. Right. So shall I do all the names? <laughs> you got okay. it. Well, let me just I, brought, I, I brought my special um, feather. <laughs> so I'm keeping an eye on everybody. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Okay. Um, I'm on my phone, so I have to swap over, so I won't see you. So I'm just going to um, let you do all the thumbs up <laughs> for everybody while I read all the names. Okay. Yeah, we, we can be goofy like that. Okay. So um, let's start off with the amazing Nisha thing. Hi, Nisha. Welcome. Nadia Linda Hall. Nancy Abramson. Kelly and Louise Gutier. Hi, Kelly. She's one of my friends in the UK. Um, Dee Gutierrez, and she's an amazing um, woman from Australia. So welcome, Dee. Rhonda Mall, Rhonda, Rhonda, yeah, Rhonda Marie, Rebecca Hardcastle Wright, Keith Leon. Hi, Lee. Hi there, Keith. Uh, Paula Kasky Melhorn. Yvonne. Sharp, Daniel Hanneman, Patty Nielsen, Sylvana Smith, Ron Brown, Marina Belinda Rogers, Rosie Lanham, Wright, Ask a Question, Change Your Life, David Riddle, Oliver Olin, Misha Silva, Anthony One Love Union, Katie Wagner, Jed Orton Wolf Rowland, Michael Seberg, and Vivian A. Blasio. That's it. That's hey. my, my love. <laughs> Thank you, Priscilla. I see that happen. <laughs> so, hello, everybody. Wow. Welcome. <laughs> so, that's more than 400, right? Say what? that again, Derek. We're the 400, 400 mark now. Four. It's 407. Okay. 407, cool numbers. Mm -hmm. You got the angels with them. So that's the number 11. So that makes it the number 11, which is a spiritual number, which is the Christ number. Mm. It's the master number. So that's quite a powerful number to be on. Mm. Yes, it is a master number, right? 11, 22, yes, and 33. 11 is a master number. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. So if you're a new so, member and you are uh, in here, it, it's a nice good number to be on. Yes. So if they're the 407 member, you know, they are powerful. <laughs> Awakening. Yes, Michael. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So fun. We've got like four hearts and thumbs up from everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. So cool. So Priscilla, how did it feel being the pronunciation queen? It felt good. <laughs> and I didn't have to laugh at Susan's pronunciation. Sorry, Susan. <laughs> no, it's more like this. Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> done, done, and done. Done, and done. <laughs> you see, a lot of them I know them, so I know how to pronounce their names. So that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Lovely, so lovely, so lovely. Oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you, thank you uh, for volunteering to do that for us, Priscilla. Amazing, I know, I know. No, I think for sure, yeah, incredible, incredible. You know, we just know how important like all of our members are. And, you know, Susan, you know, had set goals, right, Susan? So do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, what's happening this weekend and how the goals and where we're headed. Derek's shaking his head up and yes, down. Please. Super excited <laughs> super about excited. Kathy, you're in the know. We're going to talk to Kathy in just a minute. She's our special guest today and Priscilla's going to be there too. So Susan, what do they have to look forward to? Well, we have a movie night tomorrow night at eight o'clock. And the movie that has been selected is unacknowledged, but the most popular vote is my vote too, so I'm excited. Now this is um, to celebrate, this is actually to celebrate having 300 members. <laughs> and we're already past 400, so apparently we'll be celebrating 400 mark. And who was it that said we should shoot for a thousand at least last week? Tamara. Thank you, Tamara. Tamara do that so we've raised the bar because we've had to how cool is that <laughs> almost so halfway amazing. there 
Really? I just changed the date so it's correct. Oh. Because it said the Saturday the 16th, but it is the 15th tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I have like some top secret information. <laughs> so, I, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. I can hear you. <laughs> I'm on the board of directors for UFO Hunters of America. And our CEO mm -hmm. is Melissa Kennedy. And yes, her last name is Kennedy. And she's connected to people, places, and things. Let me get closer because this is really top secret. You might only be able to see my mouth. <laughs> so, so, Rebecca Hardcastle Wright worked with Edgar Mitchell. Edgar Mitchell is the astronaut who's featured in the movie Unacknowledged that you'll be watching tomorrow. Oh, Amazing. She, she is coming on the chat with all of us. And, and don't go anywhere. Wait, I got more top secret information. Come back. <laughs> So she has started EXO Consciousness, EXO for extraterrestrial co-consciousness. So it's creating collectively, collaboratively, consciously with ET. And if you think that's not a lot, wait, wait, wait till you find out more. <laughs> So that's a, a little piece um, of it. And there are some of the other uh, members, the board directors, I mean, yeah, board of us, us board directors, whatever that is. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be coming on um, and chatting with you. Um, and it's just gonna be a random thing where they're just gonna pop in, let you know what they're doing, chat with you a little bit, you know, maybe pop off or stay. Um, but Rebecca said that she hadn't yet, had seen the meet, had the, well, hadn't watched the movie, so I thought, my goodness, like Edgar's in it. Like, how cool is this? So, um, not to be a conspiracy theorist or anything, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> nice, yeah, nice. So tomorrow, eight o'clock. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna come right here because we're gonna be live streaming it right through StreamYard. So exactly what you did here today is exactly what you're gonna do tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So easy, so easy. Just come back doing the same thing we've been doing and, and it's good. So we're very, very excited to bring that to you. We are so honored that all of you have continued to contribute to the expansion of the group um, by sharing these uh, Friday Lives at Fives um, by inviting your friends, family, coworkers, uh, by posting it in your groups and fellow groups. Um, and a big shout out to Tamara from, um, you know, her group. She has been like a huge uh, partner with us. Um, in fact, she has uh, given me full permission to not have to go through the approval process. Um, all of the posts that I post will go directly onto the feed and she has over 78,000 uh, members. Um, in her group. So Tamara, that is just a huge, you know, there's, Amazing. there is, that, yeah, yeah. And there's that trust that, you know, between both of us, that what we're sharing is going to be of high value and quality and truth. Um, and we're all here to change the, the world. And, you know, this is a part of it. So thank you, Tamara. We're very excited to partner with you um, in this, you know, world where we are. And, you know, that, that brings us to, do you have any thoughts, anyone, before we introduce our guest? Did anything kind of come up? Team High Five Tribe? No, Melissa Kennedy's awesome. She's the UFO woman. That's her, her title. The events she puts on are outstanding. I went to one of her events in Orlando, had an excellent group of people there. I got to meet Nick Pope from Ancient Aliens. He's just awesome. She she brings it and, and she brings it awesomely. I was and there too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you were there too? I was there too, Derek. I was and there Kevin. too. 
In fact, I had my green my green wristband from UFO.con. UFOCon, except I don't. I, I must not have. It must not have made it all the way over here. But yeah. Yeah, I got my shirt um, there. There's the, always the shirt that has the UFO that says "I believe," but mine says "I know." It's awesome. <laughs> so Terry Lovelace was also one of the um, speakers there. Okay. Okay. Terry, and um, guess who's on the board? <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Very lovely. <laughs> is on the board with us. Um, so yeah, yeah. Like this is all you know. And it was so about the movie. You know, when I was when I was messaging people last night after I had put it out there um, about you know, hey, just come on, come play with us. You know, if there's like, you know, you don't have to stay for the whole thing. Just come in, drop some stuff, let people know what you're doing. You know, post them, post your groups, and you know your email, whatever it is, and and they. They were like, you're kidding. I said, yeah, of, of like five or six movies that we gave everybody to choose from, like unacknowledged was like the top movie, like not even close. Yeah. And the movie has to do with UFOs um, and, you know, the big disclosure um, that, you know, the, the U.S. is at, well, the world, you know, humanity is asking for. Um, and within the first four minutes, Stephen Greer and Edgar Mitchell talk about the false flag of alien invasion um, that's possibly going to be taking place. So I thought, you know, how conscious is our tribe? Wow. <laughs> right? Wow. I'm excited. Very oh, goodness. Yeah. And the movie was a clear winner. It was three years ahead of everything else that yes. people voted for. Yes. Yes. And I'll tell you just about Dr. Greer, yeah. his protocols in initiating and establishing this contact, that they absolutely work 100% and anyone can do them with an open heart and without any presence of fear and just love, it certainly happens. So what, what he's bringing is very real. And Edgar Mitchell knew he had that awakening Samadhi experience when he saw the earth from the moon um, had wonderful things happen and was always a proponent of this consciousness being outside of our body. So just a lot of great synchronicities with me and this movie being picked. I'm so jazzed, but yeah, th this is going to be wonderful for people. And that's how we met you, Derek, was through Susan, right? right. And you, because you're in California now, but you used to live here. Um, in the Tampa area. And Susan used to not be in Miami. She was in Tampa and you all went to a CE5. Right. We all met. And that was just that one time. It was just, it was synchronicity. We were all meant to meet. So it's just, it's wow. And Nothing now you're on a global live stream together. <laughs> you meet your tribe in such funny ways like that. It's so spectacular and magical, but it always lines up that way just perfectly. And yeah, just constant surprises. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about near-death experiences and crossing over and connecting with our loved ones. And you know, Derek, you've had a near-death experience. Priscilla has had them, um, and our next guest has also had them. Uh, and she's smiling. She knows that's where we're going. Um, her name is Kathy Dart Wagner. Uh, she is a near-death experience speaker and experiencer. Hello, Miss Kathy, author and mother. So exciting. I have an incredible um, bio to read to you. So if you're not sitting down, this may be a good time to grab a seat. So Kathy Wagner is an international speaker and a number one international best-selling author. She's featured in How Big Can You Dream? I think I am too. You are, I think you are. <laughs> Look at the sisters. Oh, wow. Like, I feel like I'm reading my own profile. <laughs> Surprise. How fun is that? Um, and Raising the Bar, Volume 3, her trilogy, The Next Day Came, uh, reveals her journey through depression, addiction, planned suicide, and survival after the unimaginable violent loss of her two sons in separate homicides. That was two years apart. Ironically, Kathy previously served as a law enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. Kathy is a gold star mother, 
uh, because her oldest son died while serving on active duty in the US Navy during Operation Iraq Freedom. She serves as the vice president of her local chapter. Her volunteerism supports veterans, their families, and the community. Mm. She speaks on their behalf, promotes awareness, and raises contributions for their organization. Kathy has traveled the world. She's helped hundreds of people on the topics of loss, survival, and thriving. She speaks on the loss of a child, gun violence, grief, addiction, learning disability, and how to move forward with strength and courage. With profound empathy, Kathy inspires people to find the purpose of their pain and to convert that purpose into a new passion for life. Kathy has earned both a bachelor's and a master's degree in criminal justice from California State University with the highest honors to fulfill the promise and in honor of her two sons. She has prepared, she has appeared on NBC News and on stages with the Joint Chief of Staff, General Mark My My Miley. Miley? 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mark? Yeah. <laughs> so Staff General Eminem, Governor Rick Scott, rock legend Alice Cooper, country singer Rocky Lynn, Bob Sercosta of the Home Shopping Network, Nancy Matthews of the Women's Prosperity Network, Dr. Liddy Lewis, Esquire, Orly Amore, Gary Cox, Matt Backack, J.T. Fox, Amanda Rose, and Shannon Gronich of the Business Acceleration Network. Kathy, and now you're going to get to add with the High Vibe Tribe. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy took the leap of faith and joined at 14,000 feet with the U.S. Army Elite Parachute Team, the Golden Knights, and Bent Steel with Bert Oliva. In her journey, she has discovered ways to not only survive but thrive under extreme circumstances. Kathy Wagner's mission is to honor her sons in everything she does and to be the person that they believe her to be. Her purpose is to inspire others to find their strength, to transition into a new, powerful, and fulfilled life. Kathy currently resides in Florida with her spouse, Kim, and their standard poodles. Oh my goodness, pet too. <laughs> Kathy, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for, for joining us. Thank you. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Holy cow. I feel yeah. pretty good. <laughs> It was, and there was not a single part, Kathy, that, you know, sometimes we like go in and kind of tweak some things. There was not a single part in there when I had pre-read it to, you know, that it could be eliminated. You know, every single thing that you have there is is so huge on so many levels that, you know, and, and you're like an everyday person with us. I am. And, right? And you just have extraordinary circumstances. And I survived them. <laughs> yes, you have, and we're so grateful and thank you for here. And we know our audience is going to have questions for you as you go through and kind of share, you know, chronologically kind of what has taken place in your life. And we know you have a book that's pre-launching. We're going to put that out for everyone too, so they can take advantage of that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And it's already in our group with the link um, to go there. So yeah, take us back. Kathy, when you were a little girl, you know, what was life like back then? Well, it started out with a bang right at the start. Uh, <laughs> when I was born, uh, I only know the story, you know, I have to tell you from what I've been told. But right. when I was born, um, my father tried to kill my mother and she ended up in the hospital and they blanked her memory. So I had a really shaky start from the beginning, but at two and a half, I drank kerosene. I started my little drinking problem I had for quite a few years, <laughs> and I and while the, and I only know what I was told. But while they were rushing me to the hospital and not just smoking any cigarettes, I, you know, <laughs> yeah, like don't don't light anything. And don't light anything. Happened. Don't hit a spark. They, Kathy, they, Kathy, they, Kathy, that really was when everyone was smoking. I swear, yeah, I yeah. grew up with that. Oh yeah, yeah. And, like uh, our moms smoked when they were pregnant with us. Like this was the '60s, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was, yeah, I joke about it, but truthfully, um, I drank a whole can yeah. of a uh, kerosene. And as they're taking me, I guess I literally did. My mother thought I died like three or four times. I just quit breathing, and then all of a sudden I would gasp again and start breathing. And my uncle was driving faster and faster, trying to get to the hospital. And, 
I just, I just wasn't meant to die. I got there, they pumped my stomach, and I entertained people for two days while I was in the hospital. I guess I was quite cute at two and a half, so. <laughs> yeah, that two age where it's like, why, why, why? <laughs> well, I have no idea why I drank it. I guess I was thirsty and it was on the porch and I just picked it up and drank it, so. Wow. But I didn't learn from that experience. Because a few years later, I walked in the house and my mouth was ironing and there was a glass sitting there and I drank that. It was Clorox bleach. And I got rushed to the hospital again to get my stomach pumped. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I told you it was the start of a little drinking issue I had <laughs> for years to come. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I survived that one too. And then I kind of learned that to look at what's in the glass before I drink it. Now I'm, you know, I'm a little more particular. Kind of smell, do a little smell test. <laughs> test the wine, you kind of swirl it in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so so I mean, I, I started out with a bang and, and it just kept going. I literally, I can play all nine of them if you want them. So. And then I almost choked to death three times. One was on a marble, one of my brother's marbles, because he had cool marbles and I guess I was hiding it in my mouth and swallowed it. <laughs> and my dad got it out. He turned me upside down and beat me on my back. And and then, of course, I didn't learn that lesson. I, I have to get hit in the head a couple times where I learn things. You'll, you'll learn that later. But yeah. <laughs> so then I choked on a piece of hard candy. He got that out. And then at 12, I choked on one of those great big jawbreakers that you used to get out of the gum oh. machine. Mm -hmm. yeah. I swallowed that. And he couldn't get it out. So I, I literally had an out of body experience for that. I was up above in the room. If you could see. I was up at the ceiling and I was watching it all happen. I had no fear. It was the first time in my life I ever felt loved and safe and warm. I'd never forgotten that feeling. And I watched it. My dad turned me upside down, the usual, beat my back, Heimlich maneuver. It wasn't coming out. My mom was hysterical. My brothers and sisters were screaming, you know, save her, save her. And I literally just was content. It didn't, I didn't want to go back. And finally he took his finger and just reached in and down my throat and popped it out from behind my tonsils. Two months later, I had to get my tonsils out, but. Oh my gosh. So, so as soon as that popped out, I just like went zoop and slipped right back into my body. And there I was, you know, it was really instantaneously. And it, I mean, I've never forgotten it at 12 years old. So it was really interesting. So that was a really a powerful one. And then, um, after that, I um, was on my bike one time. I never got anything new. I was the third child, so I had an older brother and sister. So I always got the hand me downs. So when I was uh, when I was thirteen, I won a bike at the fireman's breakfast, pancake breakfast for a dime, brand new bike. It was mine, and my sister wanted to ride it, so she was riding me on my handlebars. We came around the corner, and there was a dump truck coming right at us. So I either jumped or we would have went head on into the dump truck. <sighs> so I jumped and I hit my knee and my knee swelled up like a watermelon. Of course, my parents never took me to the hospital unless I drank something horrible. But <laughs> so it swelled up and it went on and a couple of years, they had, they x-rayed it when I was, when it, you know, wouldn't go down and they said, well, it's got a calcium deposit on it. Don't worry about it. Well, two years later, I got to where I couldn't walk. I would literally fall down. It would just quit working. So my mom took me to an orthopedic surgeon and he looked at her like she was just a piece of scum. He said, what the heck did they tell you this was? And she said, a calcium deposit, not to worry about it. He goes, this is a tumor that should have been removed immediately. And I had it in there for two years. So I had to have surgery to take it out. And when I went to have it taken out, my dad knew I was going to a Catholic hospital the whole time he knew I was going to Catholic hospital. But that morning as the nuns are pushing me down to surgery, he's cussing and swearing. I won't repeat the words, but you can just imagine people are coming out of the doors to see what the heck's going on going down the hallway. And I just hated, you know, life. So I, I got into the surgery and I looked at the surgeon and I said, this would be a great way to die. And he said he almost didn't do the surgery that I scared him to death. He came up afterwards and talked to me. He said, I, I almost didn't do it. I was scared. He said, I, I, I thought you were going to go to sleep and never come back. And and I told him, I said, well, that, you know, my dad was yelling. He goes, that was your parents? I go, yeah, that was my dad. And he goes, oh, my God. And he says, I'm surprised you came back. <laughs> well, uh, 
it was really weird, but it wasn't, a, I mean, it wasn't really a near death experience, but it, I, death never scared me. It, that, you know, it never was a bad thing. To me, it was a safe thing. Mm. Yeah. And then when I was 16, I was in a car with some friends drinking and, and where I grew up, there was nothing else to do but drink and, you know, go drag the dirt roads. And, and my dad drove trains. So we were always told never cross the railroad track. If the gates down, you cross that railroad track, you're going to die. You're dead, if, you know. Well, this was an unmarked gate uh, crossing out in the middle of the country. And we were flying in this Mustang and we stopped about two inches from this train going down the track. All three of us, you know how you react? We all put the brakes on in the car. And I said, I think we should back up <laughs> before the train gets us. But, and it was funny you mentioned it because I, I call them soul trains. I call them because that's what it is. It's death to me. The trains were always death. They went through our town. My dad drove them. So it was kind of freaky, but, um, so that was another one where my life literally flashed before my eyes that night. So, um, and then when I was 18, I lived on a farm, one of my last, one of my well, second to last, and I got to drive the big tractors and combines and trucks. Right. Well, I was a city girl from the South side of Chicago. Right. And, um, I never told anyone. In fact, I never told anyone until I wrote it down to yes, today in my book. And, I had this big tractor and I, it was unloading something and I was standing next to it and the brakes popped off and it started to roll and it was going to roll over me. But I, I didn't want the tractor to wreck because they would never let me drive them again. So I, I was determined to stop this moving tractor and I ran and I jumped up on it and I got the brakes on, but I never told anyone until today. I, this is the first time I've ever told anyone that that tractor almost ran me over. But I just, it's, I've never, was supposed to die. I'm supposed to be here. That that's the only thing I can say. So um, that's one of our. That's what one of our um, people who are watching our viewers, Kath, um Ashni. She says, "Kathy, you're here to stay." Yeah, I'm you supposed to be. Here. I was thinking of the one now. Ashni is one of the High Vibe Tribe members, <laughs> um, so she's in quarantine for a little while longer. Hello, oh. beautiful. We miss you. We'll see you soon. Hopefully you will get the results and we will have you back in action with us. Um, but Kathy, you and I, you were telling me about the one where um, you were next to the truck that- Oh yeah, that was that's my last one. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, that's number nine. So I've had nine of them. I, I'm glad I'm not a cat. I would have been out of here, you know, nine lives. <laughs> the last one that I just remember when I was talking to someone. <laughs> Um, after I got married and had my kids and got divorced, I started driving a big truck, you know, the big tractor trailer. And I was hauling the flatbed and you had to throw these straps over it and then tighten the strap down. We well, took this big bar and you stuck it in the winch and I only weighed 121 pounds at the time. So I literally had to jump up on the bar and tighten it to get the load tight so it wouldn't slip. Well, when I did that, the, the, the wind broke and that bar came and it karate chopped me right across the neck. And when the paramedics woke me up later, I don't know how long I was on the ground until somebody found me and I don't know how long it, you know, for the ambulance to get there and all that. But when they woke me up, they had me strapped down to a, a you know, a gurney and put me in the ambulance. They said I should have been instantly decapitated. It just wasn't my turn to die. With the force that hit me, I lost use of my right arm for two and a half years. My right arm didn't move because it did nerve damage and all kinds of stuff in my neck, but they just said it's, it wasn't your turn to die. And that was, believe it or not, it was on 8888. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, wow. I've this never forgotten that day, 8888. Yeah, it's amazing. There's a lot of people that call themselves healers and some of them truly are, and some of them are, are posers or just not developed, but the best ones that I've ever seen are people that have had to conquer a whole lot of trauma and a whole lot of, of life. And so there's definitely a reason why you're still here and you have all of these messages of just healing and, and hope. And the reason you're here is to share that, that all those stories just touched my heart. And yeah, that's definitely why you're here that the, the best healers seem to have gone through so much and to truly know healing is in a lot of ways to have experienced a lot of, of trauma. 
and the best the best healers have done that. It either consumes you or you just sprout and blossom and grow like a, a phoenix from the ashes. Mm -hmm. It was just a just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And and what a blessing you're here to share all of that with everybody. That's that's a lot. <laughs> more, Derek, there's more. Like that's just, sure. that's just her path. That's just my path. Yeah. And that's literally, literally I think that prepared me for what was to come. Because what was to come got even worse. So I had two little boys. I, yeah. I raised them. I got them growing up. And at 18, somebody murdered my youngest son. And I thought that was going to kill me, literally. I mean, I, I, I wanted to just lay down in that spot where he died and die with him. But once again, I wasn't allowed to do that. And I had to take care of my older son. Well, two years and five months later, I thought for sure he was safe. You know, he even went to war and came back and I thought he was safe. And then they took him. So, and then I had nothing. I, I mean, that would have been my entire adult life was taking care of them, raising them, getting them growing up. And uh, I mean, their stories are in the books I've written, you'll see. But th I mean, it, it just that was just my whole focus of, of raising them. We were the three musketeers. We grew up together. We loved each other. My sons always said, I love you, and gave me a kiss. Even, you know, in junior high and high school when their kids would tease them, they just look at them and say, you know what, you're just jealous. They didn't care. We were just that close. And then they took them. And I, I, I stayed alive because I was told I had a huge purpose, and that was to write this trilogy and help other people. So there I am, talking to you and smiling. And it was, it was huge, but I literally think – it's prepared me. Almost you have been a mother to them, and now you've got to be a mother to many more. Mm. Besides the oh, yeah, and I their picture. You have to have their love, and the time and you had to have the love from them in order to be able to show them, show that love to others. Yeah, because their love, you know, the love that you had for them, and the love that they had for you. It's what's going to carry you and it's going to carry the message that you have for everybody else that's going through maybe even a quarter of what you've been through. So that's important to know that the things that you are saying and, and the messages you are giving are very important. Yeah. yeah. It was made very clear to me that I, I, I never dreamed I'd write a book, much less it turned into three books to tell this story because the story is so important and it's going to help so many people who, um, yeah, book one is Jeffrey, is Jeffrey's story. That's my youngest son. Book two will be Bud's story. And book three is my story and how I managed to survive and do this. Mm. But it just became clear to me that my purpose to still be here was to write this story and to help others because it's a horrible place to be. And when Jeffrey was murdered um, on March 26, 2001, on March 21st, I got my eight-year chip of sobriety. And my kids were so proud of me for doing that, because I told you about that little drinking problem there, uh, that I would not go back and drink. And then when Bud died, I really could have went back to drinking because I had no reason not to, but I know they're watching from heaven and they... And I, I, I do everything I do every day is to make them proud. Now I have 27 years of sobriety in their honor. Everything is in their honor. So that's, that's huge. It is. It's really help. That's what, you know, everything I do, I just do every day. I get up and I, I want to make them proud and make them, you know, happy. So and like you read about getting those college degrees, that was in their honor. I didn't even talk to people for 10 years, but I went to college. I answered questions if I was asked, and I got um, both degrees with highest honors, and I have lifelong membership to six honor societies in their honor. So that's how it works. Yeah, you're honoring your memory. A lot of us probably think about writing books or somehow sharing a message and having done it, and, and I think about it sometimes too. You've had all of these things happen was it like reaching a crescendo when you wrote the books or I could see it being something like kind of healing or, or spiritual developing and just coming up with writing a book or putting something like that into words for everybody. Was it, what was it like just to be able to write like that? Well, it, 
when I first, when Jeffrey was murdered, I saw a psychiatrist for six, six months and she kept saying, you need to write this story to go help a lot of people. And I was like, well, you know, whatever. <laughs> it wasn't any need to write a book. But when I actually started writing it, I can tell you exactly when it was. It was Super Bowl Sunday, two years ago. I had a house full of people, 20, it was over 25 people here. The TV's blaring, everyone's drinking and eating. And I just was here, but like the room was just like swirling and I wasn't here and I picked up my laptop. I sat down on the couch, I opened it up and I typed chapter one. Mm. And, I, and it just kept coming out of my fingers. It was supposed to be one book, but it just kept coming out. And I just tell their legacy in, in book one and book two. And then it, it's, all, it's all interwoven, you know, because you can't tell one story without us all being in it and how it affected all of us. And, and then I, it just kept coming, and then now it's two hundred thousand words in three books. That's cool. Yeah, and I finally the other day I finally stopped writing it. <laughs> I, I figured out how to end it, and I and then that happens in my sleep. A lot of times I'll be in my sleep and I dream, or I'm talking to them. I don't know how it exactly works, but I'll wake up and I'm like, oh crap, I got to write that down. So I turn my phone on and I text myself a message. And two weeks, it was about two weeks ago. Um, ever since they died, the birds come to me. So when Jeffrey died, there was one bird. Then when Bud died, there was two birds. And then there you go. And see the picture in the book. So when I my neighbor painted that picture, and I sent her. I said, "These birds come to me all the time. Could you paint that picture? Uh, paint me a picture." And that's what she painted. And it ended up on the cover of my book. But before she would send it to me. She said, you have to name it because I name all my art. So my brother-in-law says, why don't you call it Blackbird Singing in the Dead of Night, the Beatles song. Oh. Well, that was just a little before my time. So I didn't even know what the words were. But I said, OK, that sounds cool. So then I listened to the words. And the words had so much meaning to me that that's literally how I wrap up my book with mm. um, take these broken wings and learn to fly. I, I, these birds have been coming all this time and telling me this is what you're supposed to do. This, you know, get going. This is how you're supposed to do it. You know, and and then uh, um, take these sunken eyes, you know, and learn to see. Well, I cried for so long, and then now I can see that this is my purpose. This is what I'm supposed to do. And so I I write that, and then I tie in jumping out of the airplane. She read that I jumped at fourteen thousand feet with the uh, Golden Knights. That was called the leap of faith. And they put their names on my hands. And when I jumped at 14,000 feet, the birds came. Oh, wow. And it was as close wow. to them as it did in a long time. They're about as close as the heaven you're going to get is at 14,000 feet in the sky, you know. So it was such a, an experience. And I had told the lady I jumped with that the birds come to me all the time. And we landed on the ground. And as soon as her feet hit the ground, she's like, oh, my God, did you see the hawk? Did you see the bird? Did you? She was so excited. It was it's just really interesting. So everything is just, you know, I just pay attention and I watch and the signs just come and, and my one son, Bud, likes to come. He likes to move things. So he, he likes to knock things off the shelf or whatever, you know. You mean he doesn't move furniture for you? He just knocks oh, it's not that big, but he let me know he's here. That would be too convenient. <laughs> and it's funny because the dogs see him. When they're here, the dogs will look that way and they'll start barking at him and I'll go, oh, Bud's here or Jeff's here or whatever. Or some dead person's here because I have a lot of them. <laughs> we lost nine but signs are very important. You know, I deal with signs and I deal with people from, you know, when we're communicating with spirit. And signs are important. And everybody always thinks that when their loved one passes away, that they've got to have this big billboard sign or, you know, the person's going to appear before you. But it, it isn't, it's always the very subtle little synchronicities or signs that little are their messages, especially with, you know, them coming to you in your dream. Um, yeah. Because if they did actually appear in front of you right now, you would kind of freak out because you know that they're not here. Um, you know, we all say, oh, yes, I'd love to see them. But if they did actually appear, you'd think you're losing your mind. Um, yeah, so they come to you in a lot more subtle ways. And they come yeah. to you in your dreams. Uh, mm -hmm. In the form of birds, uh, butterflies, uh, feathers. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can be a rainbow or a song that suddenly a just appears and you know won't go out of your mind. Mm -hmm. So you know it's it's all these wonderful little synchronicities and signs that really allow us to to have the communication with spirit and allow them to communicate with us as well. 
And I talk to them all the time. I tell people they're always here and they're forever in yeah. your heart. Just talk to them. They're still here. Yeah, they yeah. do hear you. Yeah. They're you always know, in your heart. Kathy, you and Susan um, have some synchronicities. Um, Susan lost her husband. Um, and never easy. No. One of the things I, I write in my book is I, this literally is a tell all. I write everything about it. But one of the things that really bothers me is that people in America, maybe all over, I don't know, I just know America, they're, they're taught not to talk about death. And I've literally lost my entire family over this. My parents have said, died. My siblings and the rest of my extended family don't really talk to me. If it wasn't for Facebook, I wouldn't know what they do because once in a while I'll see a picture or they'll like something. But they, they don't talk to me. And if I ask them questions about my kids, they talk to the subject it's as if they've never existed. I've asked for pictures because I know they have pictures, but but nothing. My sister will just say, well, that's too sad to think about. Oh, wow. And then it's like, and they yeah. also I think they want you to move on. Like, yeah. you're not supposed to have their memory. You're not supposed you to over that yet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I'll never be over it. But yeah. It, yeah it, so I literally, I write in my book about eight things that people said to me right after I went back to work, you know, like, well, he's in a better place. He's with God, you know, you know, there's like a list of eight things, but I got to the point where, you know, if they would just say anything, it would be better than nothing because after, you know, after the funeral, people go home, they go back to work, they go back to life. You're still in that same place. It, it may have been 19 years since Jeffrey died, but there's days I'm in that same place. And I can, I can cry that day. Something will trigger it. And, you know, it's just, it's, I just don't understand how people don't realize that you're actually hurting us more by not talking about it. You know, yeah. I know you know Jeffrey's stories. Tell me one of them. You know, or just, just mention his name. And that's why your books yeah. are all the more important, if that's what you're sharing in your books. Now mm -hmm. people are going to learn that and, and be able to have a conversation about death. Yeah. I feel the same way too. I, I think if there's an affliction that's just horrible for our civilization, it's that we've severed our connection with spirit, with our eternal nature. And a book like this opens that back up for us. And a lot of them, it's sad that they feel that way and they're that disconnected and, and ignorant, but conversations like this open that up, that there's this entire dimension that we aren't taught and are discouraged from speaking about. And we're having that just most crucial of conversations today. And that's beautiful. You yeah. said, I don't know who at the door. Yeah. And, and it's really powerful to, you know, just to be able to share it for me. I, I always tell stories about my kids. I always talk about my kids. Some people get real uncomfortable with it, but I figure it's just that that's where they're at. And it, it's not, it's not me, it's them. Uh, um, you know, yeah. I'm very comfortable talking about what I what I feel or know or think. Yeah. Ashni Mulchin, uh, the high one of our high vibe tribe members, um, she lost her husband as well. She and Susan have, you know, that um, mm -hmm. energy that's you know with them both. And you know, Ashni, you know, if you've got some things to share, Ashni, you know, feel free to put it in the comments. Like, get over it does not exist. Yeah, no, you don't get over it. You no. just uh, the way uh, my I just put it and I write in my book I, several times because I kept she told me I would get to a different place you will never get over it you'll get to a different place so I was always searching for that different place not that it was going to be ever be over it but just something more comfortable from that pain and the hurting all the time I wanted to get to that different place and I found it I had to move to Florida yeah, I always tell yeah I always tell people that it's it's um you need to talk about your loved ones or, or the people that have passed away because it's so important because I feel like you do them a disservice by not talking about them because all um, you do is remember the, the, the passing away and you don't remember all the years before that that they were here and all the wonderful memories you have with them, the laughter, the joy, the fun times, the, the hugs, you know the wonderful memories that you share. And those are the things that you're going to continue to keep alive. Well, and that's and why people, people are so scared of talking about death and about dying and, you know, not wanting to embrace it. People will be very happy to talk about when somebody's born, 
and celebrating, you know, their birth. But people don't want to celebrate death or the fact that somebody's gone and then you, you know, you don't want to talk about it and, and you don't want to hurt their feelings and things like that. But I feel like I'm more of a disservice by not talking about it and not sharing their wonderful life that they had in this world. Absolutely. And th and that's why I wrote these books was because if something happens to me, there's not going to be anyone who, who ever remembers Bud and Jeff being here. So now they have their own book and their own legacy that they will not be forgotten when I'm gone. Exactly. Yeah, they really lives on. yeah, because people are afraid to talk about them. And, you know, it's like, no, they're not going to be forgotten. I made sure of it. It's in writing. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Both of you guys. Yeah. 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 Also, she was on um, a guest on our show a couple of weeks ago, and Tammy uh, lost two husbands. Uh, so she's widowed twice over in the same lifetime. And uh, she was talking exactly about this very thing, Kathy, that you're mentioning now. And Ashni and I have lots of conversations about it, and Sue, too. It's like one of the things that if they could change anything, it would be this aspect of losing someone. Mm -hmm. It's like, because it felt like separation. You know, it's like, you know, people aren't comfortable to come talk about it. And, you know, you're not comfortable, you know, to approach other people. So the old, they're afraid, like the only, what do they know to do? It's like, they stick their head in the sand. You know, they do well, the opposite. The thing, you don't just lose that loved one, you lose everything. Yes. With my entire family. Yes. Period. Yes. I've got new friends and I got friends who tolerate hearing the same stories over and over again and looking at the same pictures over and over again because that's all I got. You know, the pictures yeah. in the books, they're not the best pictures, but I put them in there because you're going to see who Bud and Jeff were at those times. And I put them right in the story. So when you're reading the story, you'll see them at that time, who they were and what they look like. Because um, that's all you have. That's brilliant. Yeah, it's very important because people just don't realize it until it happens to them. And then, you know, so I always try to talk to people. One of my best lines is exactly what I told her. It's never easy. And I'm so sorry. But I'm, and I'll ask questions because I know that that's really what they want. They want to be able to share about their loved one. Yeah. And, it, and it's very comforting to have that. And you may cry. That's okay, but it it just lets you share that feeling. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah. Kathy, we appreciate you so much for coming on with us today. And yeah, and speaking about this, and it is like a delicate subject, and it is something that, you know, is sort of taboo, you know, within certain. We're going to change that. Call it exactly. And we're going to change it. Me and Susan, if nothing else, we're going to change it. <laughs> What yes, we doing? are. Yes, we are. Because mm -hmm. that's what it's about. It's about we being a love. We need love, not hatred. Yeah. Exactly. And we're pattern interrupters. Like, that's what we're here to do mm -hmm. as the High Vibe Tribe. We're here to interrupt the patterns that we've been well, following. Cool. I'm, I'm in. Yeah, we're doing a full stop. <laughs> <laughs> Survey says. <laughs> help me in. I will help. It. It, yeah, it's so important because, you know, so many people have lost many people, especially right now with this COVID thing. I mean, people are dropping their loved one at the hospital door. They can't go in. They they're, they disappear for days, weeks, months, and then they get a phone call. Oh, by the way, your your mother died. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I I'd, I'd be busting down the door and getting arrested to get to my loved one. I don't know about how yeah, people are doing it. Totally different platform. And Kathy, you were on the show with us. You were on, you know, the truth about dying, near death experiences, you know, from death to breath. Derek, you were there too, Priscilla. All three of you were on it. And we have it for sale um, for people um, who could, you know, get this and use this because we talk about it on there. Yeah. It's, it's just really, I think that these books are just going to be really powerful and help people. And I, I can't wait for them to get out there and see what happens. And, and people who have read them, they actually say they read like fiction because they said, this can't all be true. And I'm like, sorry, it is. This is my life. <laughs> we need to get a link to it, to, to her books to post 
under this so people can click and, and take a peek. Right, that's what I was gonna say. So Kathy, you have a pre-launch that's happening. You have a link, so. No, I'm sure I'm gonna, I can put it, well, if I put it in here, we'll go through. No, this is our private chat with just us here. Mm -hmm. But you know, when we end this, it'll be, you can go over to the Facebook group in there and then uh, place it in there and everyone will have it right there as well as go ahead and post it in the group separately. Okay. I absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So Kathy, I'm so excited you were here. Thank you for sharing. Oh, you know, well, let's, let's say one more thing. That's why you got confused because my book is written under KD Wagner. Yeah. Because some of the people who might decide they want to sue me for some of the things in my book, they will recognize the dark name. So we took it out of the. Oh. Uh, wow. or, yeah. <laughs> that's, oh, that's why it got a little confusing for a while. It's not that I wanted to do that, it's just I was told by an attorney to do that. Oh wow. So, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, safe, safe in love. Yeah. Absolutely. But I can tell you a funny story about it though. My granddad always called he'd always say Katie did, and I'd always tell him Katie did not. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like it. It's okay. But so yeah, my author is under Katie Wagner. So love yeah. it. And that's, you're in our group under Katie Wagner too. Yep. Yeah. So that, you can find it on Amazon under that too. Just Katie Wagner will pop it up, so. Nice. Thanks. Thank you for having me, it's awesome. I love to share these stories. We <laughs> love having you. We feel so compelled and blessed to be able to, you know, share everything that you've had because what you've had, Kathy, is like in the unbelievable category, like, yeah. like you know, the fiction. Just like you said, you know, I think it's, a novel. it's not a true story, but it is a true story. Yeah, but she can't possibly be standing. And it gives people a chance to sort of look at, you know, what's happening in their own lives and be like, wow, you know, if she can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. And gives, that's, you hope. gives you big hope. It does. Yeah. It really does. And a purpose. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like that's what so many people had a purpose before COVID. Like it was the job, the work, the school, the kids. And then when COVID hit, it became a, a pandemic. You know, everyone kind of just sort of withdrew. And it's like, well, what are we going to do today? Well, you know, getting out of sweatpants may be a good start. <laughs> I've got to find that new purpose and that new passion. Because yes, you got to figure out what you're really here for, not that job. Because that job isn't what you're really here for. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect timing for these books Thank to be coming you. out. Perfect yeah. timing. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I can't wait. Thank, Thank you for having you. me. I appreciate Thank it. it. Thank you so much. Any last minute thoughts, Susan, Derek, Priscilla? I love the I story of the book being say, created. Sorry, Derek. Oh. <laughs> Go first, Derek. I should probably Check say one it. at a time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was awesome the way the, the book was created and the story she told about just sitting. And that's what I like to call the flow state is just being present to have those words flow, to have the inspired messages come through in dreams and just the words roll off your fingers. That just shows me right there that that's just a true, honest creation right there. And that, that makes my heart sing. Thank you for that. Yep. It's yeah. just love that comes out of those books. It's all true. So Tammy, I'm going to invite you to connect with Kathy. Um, Tammy has a nonprofit um, oh. for that, and she has created purple folders um, for people that are tools to help uh, when you've lost someone. So Tammy and Kathy would love for you both to connect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Priscilla, what are your thoughts, sweetheart? I just want to say to, to Kathy that you know, she has now become the lighthouse um, for everybody else that's in the dark and in the darkness of death. And so she is that beacon of light that now draws people back into the light. So mm -hmm. I want to commend her because it's an amazing, incredible journey that she's been on. And it hasn't been easy for her by no means. Um, and I think we just tipped the iceberg of everything that's happened in her life. And you know, she needs to know that she is appreciated. Thank you. Completely. Thank you. <laughs> your bravery, Kathy, and your strength is, you know, at at a level, you know, I have never, never experienced before. Like, you know, because I have this, I don't know, superpower where I can go into people's realities and I'm there. And when you and I met, we met at this conference. 
And, and then we got a chance to be like sitting with each other next to each other. And I just had this knowing that there was just this bravery, you know, and strength that you had. And it's like, you know, when you wake up and it's like, you know, you can't do it for you. Like you, you'd be more than happy to check out, but it's kind of like you have to stay for them, mm -hmm. you know? And I've had that experience a couple of times, you know, with my son um, who's 18, he's still here. Um, but it's like, you know, you just don't want to do it anymore. You know, yeah. it's so easier to just yep. not, not get up again. To merge with the light. Yeah. Yeah, Susan, last thought. I, I, I just want to thank you so much for being here and for sharing your story. And I imagine it sounds like you're helping to dispel a lot of these limiting belief systems these judgments that may come along with death and, 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 and especially of, sh of children and, and murder in particular, and just the whole idea that we relook and we examine how we celebrate their lives and, and rebirth. Yeah, it's very important to love one another every day and cherish the time you have because you don't know if you're gonna have five minutes from now. So cherish yeah. your day. Love, hugs, kisses. Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Kathy, will you be willing to come back? Uh, oh, absolutely. Anytime you need me, you just call. Yeah, okay. we didn't get enough to your story. <laughs> I got no story, trust me. There's 200,000 words there. <laughs> <laughs> and I see movies. Uh, yeah, people have mentioned that. And you've got it the universe all the time. You've got, you've already gotten a gold star for your, did you say it was the jump? You got the gold star from your that's son. That's, that was for, my, that's for my son being killed. When, okay. When the military, well, you become a gold star mother. You'll be getting more gold stars with those books. <laughs> Big gold stars, huh? Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's yeah. Awesome. Love Definitely it. Definitely understand what a gold star is for a gold star mother. Yeah. It's, it's not the group you want to belong to, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's going to be a different type of gold star. Yeah. Good gold stars. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Remember you. when we were in school? Yeah. The, uh, the gold stars. See, I grew up 20 years. Gold stars are good to me. So I'm coming with a different. Yeah. It's, it's a little different, but yeah. Nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. We appreciate you, you know, coming forward and speaking on this huge global platform. You know, I know I sent you pictures of. <laughs> You know, it was late at night and I was posting, you know, in all of our collaboration groups and, you know, I could take a picture and it would show, you know, Kathy and then the group number amount of people that were in the group where she was being featured. And that's like huge. Yeah, it's, it's my purpose. I'm just supposed to share this with the world. You know, people die every day in the world. There's someone hurting every day in the world. And you, as my spouse and I, when we watch the news at night and you see somebody who's been killed or their child's been killed or whatever. We just say, you know what? There's another family whose life is never going to be the same. That's what we say every time. So, absolutely. And you are changing the frequency of that. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they can heal quicker than I did. But I made it, so that's all that matters. You did. You did. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, much. You Thank you Derek. Congratulations, co-host. Love having you here as a guest. Priscilla, amazing pronunciation party today. Great job. <laughs> you did better than I could do. <laughs> right, right. Kathy, love I'm, your story. I'm doing a linguistic skill. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Everyone who's joining us, thank you. If you're joining us in the future, thank you also for tuning in. We will place all of our links uh, right here in this group, the High Vibe Tribe, where you are able to um, play, come play with us at any time. We absolutely positively would love to have you here. Um, and don't forget tomorrow night, we are having our celebration movie night. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> Unacknowledged, you picked it, you chose it, you're having it. All of us here, we've got some special um, hot guests, top secret guests that'll be popping in. <laughs> my eye. Uh, yeah, so there's more. It could be very early in the morning. <laughs> yes, it'll be very early for you, Priscilla. <laughs> so like, until we like in two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> 
Priscilla said she was going to take a nap and then she'd wake up. I'll have to take well, a nap. Party <laughs> Come party with us. Love it. Thank you everyone well, so much. Love. love and hugs to all of you. Until we get to meet you in person someday. Ciao for now. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow night, eight o'clock.